I was a painter when I was little. Hang on, let me say that again. I look exactly the same. I don't think I've even grown any. You have the same, yeah, the same smile and everything. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Your hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 43. Tonight we're going to talk about when is it okay to say no. What's going on to guy tonight, guys? Man, <laughs> I like I like how you really enunciated forty three. <laughs> I've been drinking tonight, okay, <laughs> and I'm out, and I really shouldn't take the time to go get another glass. So, what's well, whatever, going on? Tonight? I say whatever you're drinking, I want some. So, Sprite and green apple um, rum. Uh, no, green apple crown. He doesn't even know. He it drank is. too much. He doesn't even know anymore. <laughs> Yo, it tastes like. Do you like apple Jolly Ranchers? Who doesn't? That's exactly what it tastes like. Is an I'll apple Jolly it. Rancher. <laughs> and that's. It's probably a bad thing because I go through it way like, too fast. Well, uh, Sterling Davis can attest that his um, moonshine that he brought to Atlanta is really dangerous and easy to drink. <laughs> moonshine. Oh yeah, dude. He brought some stuff from. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to think. I think it's Smoky Mountain Distillery. Yeah, that's and, in uh, that's in Gatlinburg. That's actually gonna be about four hours from where I'm moving to. Yeah, yeah, he he brought a bunch of that stuff, and they he he brought all kinds of mix as well as the Blue Flame, and I've had way too much. Yeah. Blue Flame sounds dangerous. It's, it is dangerous. Their their stuff is amazing. Um. Four years ago, I went through their distillery and took the tour and uh, tried all their flavors. It, that place is awesome. It's going to be dangerous now that I'm going to be living so close to them. <laughs> be like, we're taking a road trip. I'm be, going to get drunk. He'll be doing video intros, going to Smoky Mountain Distillery. Exactly, like, here I am at the distillery. <laughs> we'll see you guys Again. next time. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we had a another voicemail from Alabama Woodworker, and I kind of felt like this was going to be a show in itself because we're all going to probably have a different opinion on uh, on his question. So let's take a listen here. Hey, guys, this is Alabama Woodworker again. And, uh, yeah, really loving the show, loving the fact that uh, more people are calling in. But uh, I do have a question or a maybe – possible topic discussion for you guys and uh, I think this probably pertains more to uh, you know Zen and the and the art of uh, woodworking uh, in some way uh, oddly enough but uh, my, my my comment slash question pertains to um, you know favors and works for for friends and family um, man I'll tell you in the last the last year, uh, my wife and I have pretty much been driven insane in terms of doing favors for uh, family and friends. Uh, you know, each of us, my wife and I, have our own little talents pertaining to, you know, woodworking, sewing, uh, dance. Uh, so, you know, we kind of get into this, this rut where we're just doing so much for other people and favors for other people that we really don't get the opportunity to really enjoy our hobbies. So, you know, just sort of wondering if you guys uh, have that, ever have had that sort of happen to you guys, and uh, and how do you balance that? You know, I mean, we've gotten to the point where, like, we're just, we have to say no because to helping with, you know, woodworking projects and things like that or DIY projects because we don't get an opportunity to do things that we want to do the things that we need to do and the projects that, that we need to do. I mean, after all, I'm doing woodworking because I like to do woodworking for me. Anyway, uh, maybe a good discussion topic. Um, thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. That's right. like the dilemma of all married men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like his wife is at least on board um, with with saying no. Um 
to to some of the requests. So what what do you guys think? Is is it okay to say no to help requests and if so when is it okay? <sighs> Are you going like, to take this first? I'm just like I'm the queen of saying yes to everything. So like for me it's so hard to just be like no, like flat out no. Um and then I find that because I don't say no, I end up putting my friends and family's projects, like I make them a priority and I end up putting my own stuff on the back burner and then I get frustrated and then I find myself like kicking myself and saying, why didn't I just say no? But it's hard. It's really hard to say no to friends and family, um, especially when like you're kind of the only person they can turn to to do those things. So. For me, like, I don't know if I'm even the best person to ask this question to because, like I said, I just say yes to everything and it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just say yes. That's that's Sam's advice. <laughs> don't just say yes because then you're like me and you're like, why do I have no f- time to myself ever? Um, a double sword because most of the time when people figure out – it's, it's kind of like whenever you become a nurse or a doctor, then you are their private nurse and doctor. It doesn't matter – you know, if they have their own. (laughs) So when they find out that you are a woodworker, then they start hitting you up for projects that they've always wanted done, but could never afford. But now that they've got a friend who can do it, it's going to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're trying to make a living at this, uh, you gotta be, you gotta be careful about doing stuff like that. Uh, because eventually it's going to slip how much you charge your own family member to have that project done that their friend wants done too. Um, And having a spouse or another friend kind of uh, refer you without or even volunteer you without without your knowledge uh, can get a little out of hand. And and in the beginning, my wife was volunteering me for a few things and realized that with my podcast, trying to do this full time uh, or as much as I could uh, to get it to be full time, that I just didn't have the time to do all of these special requests that uh, family and friends were wanting. Um, and I, it's still, I, I, whenever I price things, I'm, I'm going to price it to where I can make money at it, but not gouge the living daylights out of people. Um, so yeah, you, you really have, it, it's walking a fine line when it comes to that. And I have said no several times here lately, uh, just because I don't have the time with the, the website and the, YouTube videos that I that I make and he, I've been falling behind a little bit lately because of work as well. Uh, so that's just something else added to the to the mixture that I just cannot keep up with sometimes. So taking on extra stuff can be a little tiresome and frustrating. Yeah, I agree. Um I I'm going to say I mean at some point and I I can't really tell you when that point is, but at some point you're going to have to say no. Um especially um, if you want to keep yourself sane and your and your spouse sane, um, because if you always say yes, and from what what you said is you, you are always doing these things and you never have time to do the things that y'all want to do, the, it it could it could build resentment one day um, on on one of your two parts because you're never gonna do the projects that either one of you want to do. Um, or you're never going to get to those um, dance classes or go dancing um, that, that you said y'all like to do or um, any of those other things. Um, so, you know, at, at some point you got to sit back and you got to kind of decide, you know, yes, I would really like to help this friend out because they contacted me. Um, that means, you know, they were really thinking about me. Um, but at what at what cost are you going to say yes? Um, your happiness because I can tell you now, I said yes to everything for the longest time, and it eventually just made me so um, bitter about woodworking, about um, just doing anything in general other than coming home and sitting in front of the TV and just relaxing. Um, and it it took me up until this January when I was like, all right, I'm done. Like I'm I'm not saying yes to every commission. I'm not saying yes to everybody helping me, and I'm. And if I don't feel like getting out in the shop, I'm not going to get out in the shop. If I want to get out there and just do whatever I want to do, then I'm going to do that. And I, I just, it kind of renewed the spirit of woodworking for me. Um, 
just by simply saying no to not everything, um, but to a majority of it, just so I had time to myself again. So, yeah, and I, I kind of had to talk you into that too, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, the saying no. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and it, and he, and it still even after the fact, I was like, all right, well, <clears throat> you know, they contacted me. I, okay, maybe I'm going to say yes, and then I mean, finally, after picking up three or four different possible commissions in a week, and I was just like, no, I, I can't do them. And then, you know, I, without saying no, I I kind of quoted higher prices, and if they're willing to pay those higher prices, then fine, I'll do it. You want to pay some obscene amount for me to do it? Okay. Um, but then they come back and they're like, ah, that's really what I, more than I wanted to spend. I'm like, okay, I get it. Well, you know, you have a good day. And at the, you know, at the end of the day, there's no hurt feelings. Um, but like I said, none of us can really tell you when is enough, uh, to say no, but I'm going to lean to say if it's taking away all your free time and y'all don't get to do anything you want to do. It's probably time to start saying no to some of those things. Cut them um, loose <laughs> and, and do do what you want to do. <clears throat> you know if if you if you say no to to everything, um, then you then you become unreliable. So I'm just gonna start saying no to everybody. <laughs> no, um, if you if you say if you if you say no to everything, um, then people you know, we'll stop coming to you for things. And then, you know, you'll kind of feel devalued. Um, so kind of just pick and choose what you want to help people with. Um, you know, if it's, if they're calling, asking you to come fix plumbing and you have no passion and you don't care to fix the plumbing, you just know how don't do it. Help them out where you're passionate. Um, in the, in those fields that you're passionate because then they'll, they'll, uh, really want to learn. And, you know, and if at, at some point saying no is going to force them to learn how to do it, then you got to say no because that's how you're going to teach somebody. Um, you know, if if my son always come up and say, Mom, Dad, will you feed me dinner? He's never going to learn how to feed himself. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't have kids yet. Just wait. My son, my That's a son, weird comparison. I mean, Mom and Dad, I'm really hungry. Well, too damn okay. bad. Well, here, if we if 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 we want to go to the comparison that I was gonna go with, it's at a five year old stage when they, Mom, Dad, I'm done pooping. Will you come wipe me? And you're like, How about you do it first? And then we'll come evaluate the process. Okay, that's a better one. At least you're not like killing your kid. Yeah, but look, I didn't, do. I really need to like. Blast my son's bowel movements out? <laughs> no, but you're like, well, I'm just not no, gonna. I feed didn't say, you. No, I said feed him. I'm not gonna. I'll cook him dinner. I'm not. I'm not gonna make him cook dinner. But feeding himself, you know, for the longest time, it's just like, even at like my daughter's age. So, and that's really more the comparison. So at like 17, 18 months, they can feed themselves. They're gonna make a mess. So do you let them make a mess? Or do you feed them and save yourself from doing the mess? And that's kind of where I was going with it is if you <laughs> always help them, you're never going to give them that chance to grow. Um, and, and you're never going to force them to learn. So It's funny, though, because even though you said that's the direction you were going, I still just pictured a, like a three-month-old. <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> feed me. Well, then then just, Jeremy be like, I, no. I'll just send my kids to y'all. And then, <laughs> and then y'all can decide what to do from there. <laughs> you, you'll probably send them back. You'll probably definitely send my daughter back, but you know she's she's like Sam. She's sour patch. I love <laughs> sour patch. Send them to Sam. She'll just take feed them. him sour patch. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. That's all I have in my house. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but last thing I wanted to add to that was just be honest with people. So if you really want to help him out and his family and you feel bad, like I just feel terrible all the time when I say no, just be honest and say, look, like I'll do it for you. But you got to give me like two or three months. And if they're not willing to wait, then that's not your problem at that point. I mean, I have somebody who recently asked me to, you know, make um, a bench for their shoes for their entryway. Like no problem. I'll do it. But I said, like, honestly, I don't have time to do it until probably July or August. And they were like, no problem. So yeah, just be honest. 
Yeah. I've done that before too. Somebody asked me to make a whole bunch of cabinet doors to replace their ones that they already had. And I said, "Yeah, I can I can do it. It's just going to take me quite a while. It might be till August before I can get get it all done." Uh, cuz I'll just have to do it, you know, kind of late in the evenings when I can. And I said, "If you don't have a problem waiting, then I then I'll do it." And I don't think she <laughs> I think she had a problem waiting, so I don't think she's going to do it with me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you know, plan it Plan all your things that you want to do first, Beck. I, I want to build a table or I want to, uh, we want to go dancing one night a week. You plan all those things out in advance and then you work everybody else's things in around your schedule instead of you working your schedule around what everybody else wants you to help. So, okay, anything else to add to that? I'm tapped out. Don't don't follow Sam's advice. She then never says no. <laughs> Just yeah. Don't do what I do. <laughs> well, she she did give a disclaimer that he probably wouldn't like her answer. <laughs> yeah. I'm just being honest. So. Well, is that is that about all we got? We're gonna yeah. go any further. I think so. No, I think I mean I think we answered his question. Or I hope so. I mean, <laughs> if we if we didn't answer your question, Alabama woodworker, go ahead and give us another voicemail. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's like me saying I'm gonna write this check, but if it bounces, you let me know and I'll write you another. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, we appreciate the uh, voicemail from you, and uh, for any of you guys that wanted to leave us another question, uh, feel free to drop us a an email through the. Uh, podcast email which is woodshop101 podcast at gmail.com or you can do as Alabama Woodworker just did and leave us a voicemail through the area code of 40 what is it? I gotta think about it now 409-234-3959 at least you haven't memorized I was like I it's do. written down <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've said it enough you think I'd remember it right off the bat but sometimes I get a little brain locked but uh, you can call that number from any line, uh, whether it be cell phone, landline, or uh, anything that can just make a call out. Um, if you want to contact any of us individually, Sam and I and Jeremy have a contact page on our websites through DIYHunters.com, RHWoodshop.com, and CountrysideWorkshop.com. And uh, even if you leave us an individual uh, message or question or anything through our websites, uh, also, take a listen on the podcast because sometimes we intermingle those questions through the questions that are sent through the podcast as well. Because uh, we always enjoy the questions. It gives us lots of topics to talk about, uh, just like this one. Uh, this is the first time we've based an entire um, show off of a voicemail. So that's that's like breaking ground right there. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, uh, guys, we appreciate it very much. We hope to hear more questions from you guys. Um and if you have uh, any further topic suggestions, uh, we would be open to listen to them. So from Jeremy, Sam, and myself, we want to wish you guys well. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be safe in your shops, and we will talk to you on the next podcast. One, two, three. Boom! Boom. These projects... Like I make them a priority and I end up putting my own stuff on the back burner and then I get frustrated and then I find myself like kicking myself and saying, why didn't I just say no? But it's hard. It's really hard to say no to friends and family, um, especially when like you're kind of the only person they can turn to to do those things. So for me, like I don't know if I'm even the best person to ask this question to because like I said, I just say yes to everything and it's a problem. <laughs> There you go. Just say yes. That's that's Sam's advice. <laughs> Don't just say yes, because then you're like me, and you're like, why do I have no f- time to myself ever? Um, a double edged sword because most of the time, when people figure out, it's it's kind of like whenever you become a nurse or a doctor, then you are their private nurse and doctor. It doesn't matter, you know, if they have their own. <laughs> so when they find out that you are a woodworker. Then they start hitting you up for projects that they've always wanted done but could never afford. But now that they've got a friend who can do it, it's going to be cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're trying to make a living at this, uh, you've got to be you got to be careful about doing stuff like that uh, because eventually it's going to slip how much you charge your own family member to have that project done that their friend wants done too. Um, and having a spouse or had that sort of happen to you guys. 
And, uh, and how do you balance that? You know, I mean, we've gotten to the point where like, we're just, we have to say no because to helping with, you know, woodworking projects and things like that or DIY projects because we don't get an opportunity to do things that we want to do and the things that we need to do and the projects that, that we need to do. I mean, after all, I'm doing woodworking because I like to do woodworking for me. Anyway, uh, maybe a good discussion topic. Um, thanks guys. Talk to you later. Bye. That's or, like the dilemma of all married men. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like his wife is at least on board um, with with saying no um, to to some of the requests. So what what do you guys think? Is is it okay to say no to help requests? And if so, when is it okay? <sighs> <laughs> Are I'm you like, to take this first? I'm, I'm, saying, like, I'm the queen of saying yes to everything. So like for me, it's so hard to just be like, no, like flat out. No. Um, and then I find that because I don't say no, I end up putting my friends and family. I was a painter when I was little. Hang on. Let me say that again. I look exactly the same. I don't think I've even grown any. You have the same, yeah, the same smile and everything. <laughs> yep. Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Your hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything in woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 43. Tonight we're going to talk about when is it okay to say no. What's going on to guy tonight, guys? Man, <laughs> I like I like how you really enunciated forty three. <laughs> I've been drinking tonight, okay, <laughs> and I'm out, and I really should have taken the time to go get another glass. So, what's well, whatever, going on? Tonight? I say whatever you're drinking, I want some. So Sprite and green apple um, rum. Uh, no, green apple crown. He doesn't even know. He drank too much. He doesn't even know anymore. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like. Do you like apple Jolly Ranchers? Yeah, who doesn't? That's exactly what it tastes like. Is an I'll apple Jolly it. in itself? Because we're all going to probably have a different opinion on uh, on his question. So let's take a listen here. Hey guys, this is Alabama Woodworker again, and uh, yeah, really loving the show, loving the fact that uh, more people are calling in, but. Uh, I do have a question or a maybe possible topic discussion for you guys. And uh, I think this probably pertains more to, uh, you know, Zen and the, and the art of uh, woodworking uh, in some way, uh, oddly enough. But uh, my, my, my comment slash question pertains to, um, you know, favors and works for, for friends and family. Um, man, I'll tell you, in the last, the last year, uh, my wife and I have pretty much been driven insane in terms of doing favors for uh, family and friends. Uh, you know, each of us, my wife and I, have our own little talents pertaining to, you know, woodworking, sewing, uh, dance. Uh, so, you know, we kind of get into this, this rut where we're just doing so much for other people and favors for other people that we really don't get the opportunity to really enjoy our hobbies. So, you know, just sort of wondering if you guys uh, have that ever. Have- the rancher. <laughs> and that's, it's probably a bad thing because I go through it way like, too fast. Well, uh, Sterling Davis can attest that his um, moonshine that he brought to Atlanta is really dangerous and easy to drink. <laughs> moonshine. Oh yeah, dude. He brought some stuff from. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to think. I think it's Smoky Mountain Distillery. Yeah, that's and, in uh, that's in Gatlinburg. That's actually gonna be about four hours from where I'm moving to. Yeah, yeah. he he brought a bunch of that stuff, and they he he brought all kinds of mix as well as the Blue Flame, and I've had way too much. Yeah. Blue Flame sounds dangerous. It's, it is dangerous. Their their stuff is amazing. Um. Four years ago, I went 
through their distillery and took the tour and uh, tried all their flavors. It, that place is awesome. It's going to be dangerous now that I'm going to be living so close to them. <laughs> be like, we're taking a road trip. I'm be, going to get drunk. He'll be doing video intros going to Smoky Mountain Distillery. Exactly, like, here I am at the distillery. <laughs> we'll see you guys Again. next time. <laughs> so, all right, well, we had a another voicemail from Alabama Woodworker, and I kind of felt like this was going to be a sh- 